there was a new report that came out this week that said, lo and behold, drum roll please, the Washington Post is biased. Heavens no. Heavens no. Heavens no. Who would have thunk? My goodness. It's, Zachary, where, it's where I get all my social security information. <laughs> get none of your social security information from the Washington Post. Zachary, please, as media matters for America. As, as Casey Stengel would say, it's where I look it up. Yeah, right, right. Um, Zachary, are you on with us? Yes, thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Uh, I understand that you have a new report concerning the Washington Post's reporting. Can you tell us about what you found? Sure. So we did a search um, of Washington Post editorials for the past several years and found that they had 75 editorials where they mentioned Social Security, and they had a ratio of more than 6 to 1 editorials where they mentioned benefit cuts more than increasing revenue to shore up the financial health of the program. Well, you know, the, to me, this is actually not a surprise. Um, uh, about, I guess it was about two and a half years ago or so, I uh, actually went to an editorial board meeting uh, with the, uh, gosh, what is his name, the head of the editorial board, and Ruth Marcus. Um, and he actually told us uh, that, uh, that the, the official position of the editorial board is that they're interested in slowing the growth of entitlements. So that is actually uh, their take. Uh, on Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, et cetera, they are interested in slowing the growth of entitlement. So it's not surprising to me that the reporting in your report actually, um, actually uh, found that out. And so my question for you is, uh, what is the implication uh, in terms of uh, media balance? This is uh, one of the nation's leading newspapers. Uh, they're supposed to, well, the editorial board is not supposed to be impartial, but it'd be interesting to me to know, uh, have you all at all looked at the hard news reporting and seen a bias in that as well? Uh, we have not taken a systematic look at that yet. Yep. So, um, you know, Ernie, it is incredible. Uh, there was a time a couple of years ago, not so long ago, uh, when the Washington Post was considering a media partnership with a Pete Peterson-funded operation that was supposed to be, uh, I think it was called the Fiscal Times, uh, and they were actually going to run content from the Fiscal Times uh, in their newspapers. And what do we know about Pete Peterson? We know that Pete Peterson is a very wealthy, very conservative, um, very determined adversary, if you will, of, of these benefit programs. Mm -hmm. He won't say it that way, but where he puts his money and where his messages either, messages either directly or indirectly land is that the fiscal problems in this country are related to Social Security and Medicare. And he's wrong. Mm -hmm. And he's wrong because you, know, you talk about the, the Washington Post wants to uh, cut the growth of He's slow the growth slow is the what growth. he said. And let well, me get his name because, go ahead. Go but the ahead. best part about this is, that, is, it, is it the, that we already have. We already have slowed the growth. We slowed the growth in 1983. Right. By good, good, by good amendments uh, to Social Security, which extended its solvency uh, under some equations all the way to 2040. Well, they weren't all so good, right? So they cut benefits for young people. I was born in 1971, and my retirement age for full ro normal retirement is now 67. People don't realize that the age of retirement under Social Security has already gone up, and it represents a benefit cut for those who actually um, have, it, who fall under that. Uh, right, and that's, that was my case, too, because I'm a baby boomer, and mm -hmm. my full retirement, I, I think, is 67 mm -hmm. as well. But, but the fact, but, but that was that was what was was needed then, and it was a pretty bipartisan is a bipartisan consensus. Um, Robert Dole said he was part of the committee that did it. Bob Dole said it was his finest Senate hour, and the same thing happened with Medicare with um, the Affordable Care Act, where um, fiscal moves were made within Medicare to to extend its solvency life all the way to uh, another probably in the range of ten years. So their statement is. An irrelevant statement, in fact, and, and factually wrong, and absolutely the wrong direction to go. These programs are in good shape, and any kinds of changes that ought to happen ought to be around the soundness of the benefit, not cutting, um, not cutting benefits that that seniors and persons mm -hmm. with disabilities need. Zachary, I'm curious: were there any uh, conclusions that you all reached about why uh, the Washington Post editorial page seems to have this bias? Uh, no, we didn't uh, determine why they did it, but the problem with their slant is that 
benefit cuts such as change CPI were determined by the Congressional Budget Office in a report a couple years ago to only extend the trust fund by four years. It just doesn't do much. And what's so interesting about it is, and, and when we were in that meeting a couple of years ago, we actually talked about scrapping the cap. You know, most folks don't know uh, because most folks aren't high wage earners. Uh, that wealthy people only pay Social Security payroll taxes on their first, first 113600 uh, in salary. Uh, and so everything, anything above that, they're not paying Social Security payroll taxes on. But if you just scrap the cap alone, uh, that actually eliminates uh, the long-term solvency gap under Social Security. And yet you never hear the Washington Post actually talking about that. So, um, you know, it's very interesting how the mainstream media has been co-opted, Ernie, by this, uh, by this Peterson kind of message of you know, cutting quote unquote entitlements, which are, by the way, earned benefits. Uh, and for me, uh, it's really kind of stealing from the American people because this is their money that they put aside for this purpose. I agree with that completely. They've, they've earned it, they depend on it, and it's an absolutely wrong direction to go. Zachary, is there anything else you want to tell us about Media Matters? What's your website? Uh, sure. The website is mediamatters.org, and we're a progressive media monitoring group that corrects and analyzes. Uh, conservative misinformation in the media. And how are people to use your results, what you find? I mean, how are they supposed to use that? Um, it can be used by uh, pundits on TV to rebut against conservative talking points, or, you know, um, ordinary people can also use it to push back on social media or in discussions with friends and family. Well, thank you very much, Zachary Plate, for joining us today. Hope to have you on again in the future. Thanks. Have a good day. All right, that was Zachary Pleat of Media Matters for America on their new report concerning the Washington Post's reporting, which is not surprising, is biased, is slanted. Is the New York Times better, Ernie? For my taste, they are. They, well, first of all, they got Krugman. They've got other good, good writers in there, and I, they seem to be much more balanced. I, I actually agree with that. They're more balanced, although, um, you know, uh, certainly I think on the editorial pages, they're absolutely stellar. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, some of the hard news pieces, um, you know, sometimes don't get it all right. But, you know, who, who does? I saw who some does? really good pieces last week on predatory lending and a number mm -hmm. of other good issues that I think progressives agree with and that talk about the right reforms. Right. Well, you know, there was also a report issued by the Roosevelt Campus Institute recently. Uh, and for those who don't know, uh, we will be talking to uh, Alan Smith, who's the Director of Policy and Programming, and Elizabeth Stokes, who's a senior fellow at the Roosevelt Institute right after the break. But it's always great for me uh, to know that young people uh, are actually concerned about the direction of our country and have ideas about how to make this place a better, uh, make this country better and our institutions better. And to add to that, particularly with the Roosevelt Foundation, concerns about Social Security and Medicare. Absolutely. Without these sort of sort of instant appraisals that they're all going broke and that they're a bad thing to do and that sort of That's thing. That's right. I mean, the, the, this is a, a very thoughtful group, um, a very progressive group. So it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's an exciting opportunity. You are listening to Pivot Point with Maya Rocky Moore, sponsored by the National Committee to Preserve Social Security and Medicare. Stay with us. <laughs> Thank you. 